Okay, hi. So I start by recalling you uh, the last lemma of of Thursday. Uh, so we have that we prove that if we have uh, a measurable, uh, integrable actually function. And such that we have the integral of f over a, where a is any measurable set contained in E, is uh, non negative, then we show that we prove that f, we can infer something about the sign of f. So we have that f is larger or equal than 0 almost everywhere in uh, uh, E. OK, now, uh, uh, so we want somehow uh, to relax this uh, requirement. So here we are asking that uh, this, uh, we have to um, be sure that this holds for any, uh, for any measurable set. So we, we take a as test set any measurable set. Okay, now we want to, to relax this a bit. And we consider as lemma two uh, f an integrable function, this time we define it on an interval i integrable. And such that the same a requirement on the sign of the integral is verified. Uh, so f is not or equal than 0. But this time, u is enough that we have to check for any u, u open, OK? For any u uh, with u open. And then, OK, then, then the, the conclusion is the same. Then we have that f is larger or equal than 0 almost everywhere in A in I, OK? So somehow here we, we relax the requirement, because it's enough to check only for, for you open, for, yeah, for you open. OK, so, so somehow this is also a consequence of the uh, an application of the Lebesgue convergence theorem. Okay, of course we want to use this result. Okay, so we we recall that if we have a measurable set, then we can approximate I it in a quite nice way. Okay, so we know that uh, then there exists a set G. We always call it as G, belonging to the class G delta, which are uh, countable intersection of, uh, of open set, okay, uh, such that we know that uh, A is contained in G and the measure of uh, G minus A is, uh, is zero. Okay, so let's, uh, we have that A is equal to, um, this minus g minus a of f, this is 0, OK, because the measure is 0. So we have that these two is equal. OK, so by definition, we have that of, of g. We have that we can represent g as the countable uh, intersection of open set, so u n open. And here, with no loss of generality, we can think of this as a decreasing sequence of, uh, of a set. So with uh, no loss of generality, we can assume that this is a decreasing sequence of open sets. So u1 contains u2 and so on, because here, uh, uh, no, sorry, u3 and 
un because here the idea is that for instance uh, if it is not uh, if it is not fulfilled then you replace u2 with uh, u1 in, uh, intersection u2 and so on u3 you would replace u3 with intersection of u1 u2 uh, sorry u3 okay okay so we have this okay now we consider the characteristic function of each uh, open set un So we have we have that the characteristic function of U n converts to the characteristic function of G. So in fact uh, we can distinguish two cases if so if X is in G then it is in we have that cg of x is equal to 1 and we have that c u n of x is equal to 1 uh, because because g is contained in u n okay so if x yeah point wise Ah, in fact, no, no, here is written in fact. Uh, here I mean uh, uh, almost everywhere, no? The, the point was convergence almost everywhere. Uh, th this is an explanation of why this is true. Okay, so if x does not belong to g, then this, of course, is equal to 0. And uh, if it is not to g, it means that there exists an index and there exists an index x not such that for any n larger than x no, uh, n not we have that x does not belongs to u n. Okay, so basically you have that from key of u n of x is equal to zero for for any n. Okay, larger or equal than n, uh, n not. Okay. Okay, now, and we have that this sequence is a decreasing sequence, okay, because, because the set are decreasing. Um, so now we want to multiply uh, for f this uh, and we get that this converts of course to k g again almost everywhere in uh, in i okay okay we of course we want to use the Lebesgue convergence theorem so we also notice that uh, we started by the hypothesis that f is an integrable function uh, u and also this is bounded by by f and uh, so by the dominated convergence theorem theorem oh, we have that we can pass uh, to the limit uh, under the sign of integral so we have that f of q u n Converts to f k of g. Okay, this is a this is of course f of u n. And okay, so we have that this is uh, okay. These are open. Okay, so by hypothesis we know that this is um, non-negative.
And so we have that basically. Uh, okay, this is. We know that g of f is larger or equal than zero. But uh, the beginning, we prove that um, this was equal to the integral over the test, uh, the, the measurable set A to introduce. Okay, so from the lemma before, from lemma one, we can deduce that f is, uh, is larger or equal than zero. in i. OK, because of course a is uh, an arbitrary measurable set. OK, now uh, we want to relax more this hypothesis. So maybe we can test uh, the positivity of the integral uh, only on uh, on special open set, which is namely on um, on open intervals. Okay, so now comes the third lemma. So again, we have f an integrable. I is an open interval, and we have and assume that the sign of f, the sign of the integral of f over j, is larger or equal than zero for any interval. Any j contained in i, where j is an open interval. Okay. And then, okay, we have the same conclusion. We have that f is larger or equal than zero almost everywhere in i. OK, this time, to prove lemma 3, we want to use lemma 2. Uh, so and, and again, here, uh, the, the strategy is, uh, is analogous of the one that we use here, in the sense that we want to approximate um, an open set to use lemma 2 by uh, open interval. OK, so we saw, we know that, we know that, uh, if you start by, uh, let's call, uh, if u is open, then u can be represented as a countable union of this joint open set. So i from 1 to infinity of, um, call them i n, where i n are um, this joint open uh, interval. This is, we proved this one of the first lectures. Okay, so now we, we, we want to say something on the sign of this integral over u. Okay, now we use, of course, uh, the countable additivity property. So we have this is equal to i n. Oh. Yes, of so f and this uh, we, okay, we know that this is positive, each of them is positive. And uh, so by lemma, by lemma two, we can, we can say that this is true for any arbitrary, s arbitrary open set. So we can, we have that since u is any arbitrary open set, then we can infer that f is indeed larger or equal than zero. Uh, okay, almost everywhere in i. 
Okay. Uh, okay. And now, just take this theorem. Oh. So, you consider, again, a function, an integrable function over an interval, define an interval with values in R. It should be, must be integrable. Assume that i is an open interval. <coughs> and assume that <sighs> this the integral of this product, now I told you what is phi, phi is always zero for any this is true for any phi which is c infinity with compact support in i okay so phi is c infinity with compact support uh, in Okay, this must be true for any phi, okay? And then what can we say about phi, f? Well, what will compact support? In <coughs> compact support. Mm -hmm. no. Compact support. You know what it is? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay, phi. Compact support means that the set where f of x is different from zero, the closure of this set is strictly contained in i. The, the no, no, no. You, you just you, you consider the set where phi of x is different from zero. Take the closure, so it's, it's okay. and you have that. Uh, this must be contained in strictly contained in I. Okay, this means compact support. Okay, so what we want to infer is that. A pointwise property again that f is equal to zero almost everywhere in uh, in I. Okay, so this is a very fundamental theorem, especially it arises in uh, distribution theory. Probably you will see later. Okay, so let's prove it. Okay, so we consider. Uh, an open interval, J, an open interval. Such that uh, J is contained in I. Okay, just um, for instance, J is equal A, B, maybe just to fix the idea. And then, uh, now just believe me, we can construct we can construct uh, a sequence by n in uh, which so which satisfies this property. Such that we have that they are non-negative 
and they converge increasingly to key A B to the characteristic function. Yeah. Hmm? J J is A B. It's J from A to B. Yeah, it's an interval. It's an open interval. Ah uh, no, but A to B yes. And this is the same, okay? We I mean, ju just to fix the idea, okay? Okay. So by hypothesis, we have that. Uh, we have that. The integral over i of um, of f times phi n. Uh, is equal to zero. Okay, and moreover, again, we want to apply the dominated convergence theorem. Okay, so we have that this converse pointwise. B. So ah. this arrow means, means uh, point wise convergence? Yeah, which is increasing. Yes, yeah, point wise. I mean, may, maybe it's it, it is not, it's not necessary. So ju just, uh, just consider this. This is enough to, to what we have to do. But in addition, it's also increasing. Um, OK, so f times phi n is less or equal than f. Like just to be. which is integrable, and then by the dominated convergence theorem, OK, we have that, of course, that the um, f phi n converts to f. Uh, this is equal to zero. Uh, okay, let's. Um, so this converts to to f to the integral of f over i. Okay, now you you can uh, you can think. Ad, so you basically you have that. So you have that. Um, this is zero. Okay, and then think of this as the fact that. This means two things, but you can see this as these two facts satisfy simultaneously. So this means that f is must be larger or equal than zero almost everywhere in uh, in i. Um, this is j. Okay. And uh, f is less or equal than 0 almost everywhere in i. So basically, what you get is that indeed f is equal to 0 almost everywhere in i. Okay, now we'll try to um, somehow uh, to outline how we can construct this such a function phi n. Is it clear or not? <laughs> I mean, here is that, I mean, you're out here, this is zero now, and you can think at it, uh, I mean, it's uh, as these two, these two inequalities satisfied, okay? This is, um, this is equivalent to say that the integral of f over i is equal to, s to 0 is equivalent to say that these two are satisfied. Okay. Uh, but this uh, level of convergence, uh, this uh, <coughs> is a point of an arbitrary interval. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You apply the last lemma, no? This is. No, we, we, we said it with the larger or equal. The last, uh, the last year. Yeah, we, we, we said it like, like this, like this part, the integral over j of f is larger or equal than 0, then f is larger or equal than 0. And then, you, of course, you can prove that it's the same for the less or equal, and you... Okay, so how we can construct such a function phi n? Um, okay. So consider, um, mm, just to fix the idea, i to be uh, an open interval AB of end, uh, end points of AB, and then we have that there exists a sequence phi n of function in C infinity C, which is infinity with compact support defined on I, um, such that they, um, they are in between 0 and 1, okay, and they converge, we have that, what we used before, they converge increasingly to the characteristic function of uh, AB. Almost everywhere. Okay. So the, the proof is a constructive one, so we have to really to proceed by step. So first of all, let me uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, the following function f defined in a piecewise piecewise way. So f is defined from r to um, to zero one as follows. Okay, it is zero uh, for x if x is less or equal than zero. Otherwise, is equal to e to the minus 1 over x if x is, uh, uh, is positive, okay, strictly positive. Okay, um, I mean, with the elementary argument, you know that f is continuous. Take the limit, okay. It's continuous on r. Because, I mean, if you let x tend to, to 0 from the right, the limit is 0. Okay. And then, so what about the derivative of this function? Uh, so what about so the derivative? So you have that f prime of x is equal to um, 0, of course, if x is less or equal than 0. Otherwise, is equal to 1 over x squared, if you do the computation, times 1 over uh, x, if x is positive. OK. Again, you can prove that f prime is also continuous. Sorry? Huh? One x squared? Square, yes, x squared. x squared. f prime is continuous also in 0. OK, you can prove this either by considering the, the incremental quotient or just by observing that the two derivatives exist in, in the two in two pieces and and um, and they coincide in zero. Okay. Okay. Now, if you if we go on, so the second derivative and so on, what do we obtain? So 
So you would have that f second of x is equal to zero if x is, and you get, or uh, here you get minus, or no, plus x to the four and minus one over x, x positive. And basically here, if you look, the idea is that you, if you go on with the computer derivative, you here you obtain a polynom of one over x. Okay, but of course we have to prove that this is true, and we will do this. Uh, uh, we do this by induction. So again, here f second is continuous, and so on. So we claim that. The, the kth derivative that fk of x is equal to 0, okay, if x is also equal to 0, otherwise is a polynom pk of 1 over, e, 1 over x times uh, okay, e minus 1, 1 over x, if x is positive. Pk is a union of in the variable one over x. Okay. okay the, the step k equal to zero is is true for the step k equal to zero. The claim is true. We have that. Um, so we prove we want to, to argue my induction. Okay, so we have that if. Is equal to zero. Then okay. And uh, so we assume that uh, the claim is true for k. Is true for the index k. Uh, and we want to prove for k plus 1. Okay, so we have that. Uh, if you do the computation, what do you obtain? This is 0, it's x is less or equal than zero. Otherwise, you get something of the type minus one over x squared, pk prime one over x, uh, e to the minus one over x plus pk uh, one over x, e minus one over x for x positive. So basically, if you collect um, um, e to the minus 1 over x, you get the t. So you have that p k plus 1 would be minus x squared p k prime 1 over x plus p k 1 over x. Okay? Okay, by analogous consideration, you can prove that this is continuous in zero. So indeed, we finally prove that um, so we have that such an f is, uh, is c infinity in R. Uh, 
Um, ah, okay, and uh, another I mean related property is that such a function, the function f, uh, um, uh, provide an example of a function which is um, c infinity but not al analytic. Okay, because you have that the, the the derivative of any order are zero, so the series converts to zero near zero, but the function is not zero, okay? Okay, and now we want to construct, uh, using this f, this function phi n, which converts pointwise to the characteristic function of an interval, okay? Okay, ju just to vi visualize the things, this function is, is uh, okay, zero here, and here is very flat because uh, all the, the derivatives of any order are zero, so it's something like this as, as an, an asymptote uh, in correspondence of one, okay? Uh, so at level one, you have asymptote. Okay, so how we can, uh, we can modify, we can uh, handle this function f we define uh, a function g uh, from r to r in such a way. You have that g is defined by means of f like this, f of x times uh, f of one minus x. Okay, just observe that if x is uh, is non positive is um, non positive. You have that f of x is zero, and then g of x zero. And if x is larger or equal than one, f of one minus x is also zero. Then again, g of x. Is zero, okay? So <coughs> just to so the graph of G looks like something like something like this, okay? Okay, now we want to use G to, to proceed. And we want to construct this function. Um, so we want to construct Function uh, big G, capital G, which is C infinity in R and which satisfies um, the following properties. That G of X is equal to zero for any X. Uh, for any x uh, less or equal than 0, it must be in between 0 and 1. If x is in between 0 and 1, and uh, must be equal to 1 for for x larger or equal than 1. So a way to, 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 
So to provide such a function B, capital G by means of this small g is the following. <coughs> we define g of x as the quotient between the integral between uh, 0 and x of g of t in the t divided by the integral between 0 and 1 of g t in the t. So because you have that, uh, if uh, okay, if x is less or equal than zero, then g is zero. Then okay, and also uh, g is zero. If you have that x is larger than one, uh, then you can look at this the numerator has 0, 1 plus uh, 1 x and this is 0 and so g is 1 and in this case you have that also g is in between uh, 0 and 1 So, okay, if, if you have x between 0 and 1, then because so g is positive, and so if you have that this quotient is between 0 and 1. Okay, now we define a contraction of this g. So how it looks like? This g looks like like this, you have, um, okay, this is zero, so here uh, is zero, and then you have a transition from zero to one in this, uh, in this interval zero, one, okay, this is the level one, okay. So now we, we, we make a contraction of this big G in order to make this, this, uh, this, uh, this transition from 0 to 1 somehow faster, okay? So we define G epsilon of X, G epsilon of X has G <coughs> of X divided by epsilon, so it's a contraction. And so how it looks like the graph, you have zero, this times the transition uh, uh, happens between zero and epsilon, so you have something like this. And uh, of course, g epsilon is still uh, c infinity. Okay. The graph is for capital G. Sorry? The first graph. Yeah, the first graph is for capital G. And this is for G epsilon, okay? Yeah. See, the only thing that changes this part, that this transition. Okay, and then basically what we want, we, so we, we have this to define this function phi n, which uh, um, approximate the, um, uh, the characteristic function of a, b in a c, in a, of course they have to be c infinity. Okay, so we are interested on somehow on this transition, on this part of the graph, okay? So we will use this g epsilon, how it is defined in this part from zero epsilon to approximate the characteristic function. So, uh, okay, you will have 
basically a b this is at level one and here I can approximate, I can construct this function phi n. I just I just show you with the I mean with the drawing in uh, by using this tra the transition between a uh, plus epsilon, for instance, and a minus uh, mm -hmm. a b b minus epsilon. Okay, and I define this function phi n between a and a plus epsilon has G epsilon is defined here, okay? So, um, okay. It would be like this, and here it, it's like uh, you can argue, you can reflect the graph, and this, the dashed line, um, represent the graph of the phi n, okay? So basically what I found is that the phi n are C infinity function, they have compact support. Okay, actually you can, no, to have a compact support, actually I have to, um, uh, so let me consider, okay, let me move A here, and here is A plus epsilon over two. Okay, so A is here, and uh, here is, B minus epsilon over two, and B is here, okay? So there must be some room to put them phi n equal to zero, okay? So they have compact support. Uh, from, from, epsi from here, Uh, epsilon is uh, one over two. I took uh, a plus epsilon over two. Uh, I mean, okay, Eps a plus epsilon over two plays the role of zero here, okay, while a plus epsilon plays the role of epsilon, okay? Okay, uh, but the uh, definition of uh, CF is. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I define it by the, by, 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 by the drawing. Just so you understand that, I mean, the delicate point is how to, to define a transition from, uh, from zero to one in a C infinity way, okay? Th this was somehow the, the, the difficult part. So then you can, uh, um, okay, you can do the details, but the meaning was this, okay? Okay. Yeah, and also let me um, let me observe that the construction of such phi n. Uh, I mean, also, I mean, we, with the construction of this phi n, we can also improve a former result that we uh, that we prove uh, just uh, when we introduce uh, the first uh, result in measure theory. And so, more precisely, we can restate this theorem. So basically, we prove at some point that we can approximate a measurable function by means of a continuous function, if you remember, in some, okay, in some proper way. And then we can say more. We can say that we can approximate a measurable function by means of C infinity function with compact support, okay? With the, if you do the, so, so if you have let f be a measurable function, function, um, 
So you, I think you you must uh, you have something you have to require that it must be it must take infinite values, but we have to assume that the measure of the set where f is plus or minus infinity is zero. Okay, then we can approximate such a measurable function in this improved way. So then, given um, any epsilon positive, we have this time that there exists, uh, there exists a sequence, or okay, there is some h, uh, h which is c infinity uh, with compact support, okay, uh, in a b, such that um, the measure of the set of the, okay the, the measure of the set of the x in uh, in a b where we have that f okay f of x minus this h of x is uh, larger a larger or equal than epsilon is less than epsilon. Okay, if you remember, we proved this, this theorem, and uh, we proved that there exists an H which is only continuous. Uh, do you remember? And at some point, if you remember, we had uh, this problem arise that uh, we had uh, to approximate with a continuous function the characteristic function of, um, of an interval, okay? And uh, we do this... Uh, <coughs> So we did it in a quite, uh, if you want, rough way. We just took <coughs> the function the function g like this. We call it g, I think. Now we can improve, no? Because we now we, we you, if you repeat the same argument and you and you replace the function g, the continuous function g, with uh, this function phi n. Okay, so the graph will be uh, slightly will be smoother okay so then you can you can prove uh, this theorem okay okay now I Okay, I will introduce the notion, uh, just to conclude the part uh, concerning measure theory, the notion of convergence in measure. Okay, so... following definition uh, so we have fn and f are defined in R. Um, measurable Okay, then we say that that Fn converts to F in measure, the sequence Fn converts uh, to F in measure, if you have that for any epsilon. positive, the limit uh, as n tends to plus infinity of, sorry, um, the, okay, the limit of the measure uh, of this set, um, 
so we have the where fn of x minus f of x here is larger than epsilon. Okay, this limit must go to zero. And uh, so in analogy, you have the definition of a Cauchy sequence in measure. So we give another definition. <coughs> You have that a sequence of <coughs> measurable function <coughs> Fn is a Cauchy sequence in measure. If you have that for any epsilon <coughs> positive, there exists an index n bar such that for any n and then larger than this n bar, uh, the measure of the set of the x in E where fn of x minus fm of x is uh, larger or equal than epsilon is less than epsilon. Okay, then we, s we prove a theorem. Uh, we state a consequence of the uh, of the convergence uh, the, of the convergence in measure. Okay. Okay, so let F n so be a sequence. of measurable real valued function uh, which is a Cauchy sequence in measure such that Fn is a sequence of measure. Okay, then what we can say about the pointwise convergence of this Fn, we can infer that then there exists a subsequence of Fn that exists actually a function, a measurable function. F in the subsequent uh, subsequence, uh, call it F and K of, of the original sequence F n, such that we have that for any epsilon positive there exists a measurable set A with small measure less than epsilon such that we have that outside this set this set of small measure the convergence is, is uniform ok 
like I uniformly go. On, uh, okay, on E minus A, okay? The, the, of course, the, um, E is the domain of the fan and, uh, and of F. that okay we by hypothesis we know that uh, a fan is a Cauchy sequence in measure so from hypothesis uh, we have that if we fix <laughs> we have that um, okay for any instead of taking X and epsilon we take a K um, positive integer and we have that there exists a corresponding n k such that for any n for any m and m larger than n is n k uh, we can have that the measure of the set of the points in E where f m of x minus f n of x is less, make a particular choice of this sign, k is less than 2 minus k. OK, again, we, now we, we do an extra uh, hypothesis, but this with no loss of generality. We can assume that the dependence of nk is increasing with respect to k. Okay, it's increasing. because otherwise you can replace, so otherwise uh, you uh, replace, um, for instance, nk, nk plus 1 by the maximum of um, n1 and uh, the former one, OK? OK, now we define the set EK. So define EK as the set of the point of X in E such that we have that fn of k x minus fn of k plus 1 x is larger or equal than 2 minus k. OK. OK, and then we consider the union of this set starting from an index m, for instance. So you take fm to be the union for k, which goes from m to infinity of this ek. Okay. OK, now we consider a point which is outside of m, x, which is in e, minus fm. OK, how it behaves. So, and we have that. And let two index uh, j, k, n 
such that for instance they are larger than than m okay then by the triangular inequality we have that f and k of x minus f and j hmm? Hmm? Let x belong to E minus FM and let J, K, or what? Uh, let x, x, uh, let J, there are two indexes, no? J and K, which belongs to N, and they are larger than our index N, okay? So, so they, are, they are here. Okay, now we use the triangle inequality, and we have, uh, we can bound this uh, has taken an index L from uh, uh, so <coughs> K for instance uh, so from K to J or J minus 1 F and L of X minus F and of L plus 1 of X And since we are outside Fm, we have that this is less or equal than the sum of 2 minus L, 2 to the minus L, which is, okay, which is 2 minus K uh, plus 1, 1 minus 2, K minus J minus 1. Okay, from this we have that, <laughs> we get that that if you take the limit as k and j, this, this two index tends to infinity. Yeah? yeah. Summation. This is the summation, I took the index L to k to j minus yeah. 1, because I suppose j is larger than k, 2 minus l, 2, two yes, yes, yes. <coughs> okay, so the supremum over x, uh, which belongs to uh, e minus fm, Of, of f and k of x minus f and j of x, uh, this goes to zero, okay? And we call it star. Okay, so we have that um, r is a complete space, so f and k is a Cauchy sequence and so there exists a limit in R so this F um, such that we have that uh, F and K converse to F <coughs> So we set is fx has the limit has uh, mk tends to plus infinity of fn of x. Okay, so f is defined uh, on each e minus fn. x is defined on, on the union of v minus fm uh, over m, okay? And this is e 
uh, minus the intersection okay, of Fn. Okay, so we have that. Okay, by star, what we uh, by this we know that f k f and k converge to f uniformly on e minus f m, and this for any m. Okay. And then, of course, we have we will have to say something about the mu the measure of this f m if it is small or not. And of course, we have also that if we took f uh, has uh, taken the intersection of this f m, uh, this is the uh, ju just by definition this is the intersection of. Uh, of an union, uh, so it's k which goes from m to infinity of this e k. Okay, so just let's uh, estimate the measure of f m. So we want to to infer that this is small in some sense. Okay, so this is less or equal. Um, Okay, it's um, it's equal to the measure of e k, k which goes from m to infinity. Okay, then of course this is less or equal than the sum uh, of the measure of e k. Okay, but by hypothesis, the measure of this e k is less or equal than two minus k. This is less or equal sum two minus k. Okay, this can be that it's for any m. So basically. Um, this, of course, tends to zero as m tends to zero. And so what we prove is that the measure of f is equal to zero. So actually, we prove more. So we prove that, uh, so we add that fn of k converts to f almost everywhere in E in E because it converts uh, pointwise in E minus F, okay? It converts pointwise and F is measure zero. So we prove that if we have a Cauchy sequence in measure, then it converts uniformly outside set of small measure, and it, co it converts almost everywhere in E, okay? So we proved two facts, actually. Okay, and now, so in this uh, last 15 minutes, maybe we can, well, we can do some left exercise. Um... So these are exercises on the actually on the on the monotone convergence theorem. Um, okay, so just start from um, from a general fact. So you have, for instance, 
a function f from 0 to 1, <coughs> I'll take 1 included, in 0 to plus infinity, which is continuous, for instance. Uh, so basically, by the monotone convergence theorem, we can we can compute this uh, uh, this integral has the limit as epsilon actually over um, over a, a sequence epsilon goes to zero of <coughs> of epsilon of n. Um, f of x is equal to so, okay, so by uh, okay, so for instance, we can specify the choice of, of f. So if you have, um, for instance, f of x is equal to uh, 1 over x alpha with alpha positive. OK, so what can we say? We can, we can divide um, three cases. Uh, so we have the cases when, uh, for instance, we have epsilon over 1, 1 over x alpha in the x. You have this is uh, the primitives is x minus alpha minus one uh, minus alpha plus okay plus one so this is over x epsilon x equal to one and then this is one over minus alpha plus one minus alpha plus one so this goes to plus infinity when minus alpha plus 1 is, uh, is negative. So as we have uh, that the integral between 0 and 1 of 1 x alpha is, <coughs> is equal to plus infinity for alpha uh, larger than 1. And then When alpha is equal to 1, so I mean, these are, of course, things that you already know, but just to, to see them as an application of the monotone convergence theorem, this is the logarithm of x, epsilon 1, and this minus the logarithm of epsilon to plus infinity, this is for alpha 1. Uh, OK, C, the case, this is A, this is B. OK, so A and B, the integral is equal to plus infinity if alpha is larger or equal than 1. The case C, which is the finite one, you have that 0, 1, 1 over for the same reason that you have this, this is equal to 1 over 1 minus alpha. So it's finite with alpha less than 1. OK, then we can slightly change, for instance, the denominator alpha uh, x. <coughs> What you have is that, for instance, if we, if we so another exercise might be to consider this integral of sinus of x alpha in the x, OK? Uh, here, alpha is always positive. OK, so we have that. In this interval, sinus of x is less or, less or equal than x. Then you have that 
the sinus of x to the alpha is larger or equal than 1 over x to the alpha. So we try to use this result. And so we have that the integral of 1 sinus of x alpha in dx is equal to plus infinity for alpha larger than 1. But on the other hand, we have also that we also know this is of okay, care a standard fact that when x tends to 0, the sinus of x divided by x is the limit of this quotient goes to 1. Okay, so we have that this means that there exists some delta positive uh, such that, for instance, 1 over 2x is less or equal than sinus of x for x in between 0 and delta. And then you have that the sinus of x alpha is less or equal than 2 alpha x to the alpha. We can split this interval 0 delta has sinus of x to the alpha plus delta 1, 1 sinus of x to the alpha. Okay, this is finite. It's finite in a problem because we are outside the singularity. And call this A. integral between 0 and delta of sinus of x the alpha is less or equal than the integral between 0 and delta of 1. Uh, okay, if you want 2 alpha x alpha, but we already computed this. This is less or equal than 2 alpha 0 delta, um, okay, not to, um, uh, okay, less or equal, okay, then this, which is finite for alpha less than 1. Okay, so now maybe you, you can do, you can study by yourself a strain, a slight variation of this. And you can use uh, somehow the same argument. Okay, what you you can you can for instance you can try to solve is the following. So over the interval zero one over two, uh, you can try to solve this x alpha and log x beta in, in the x uh, with alpha positive and beta also positive. So you can try to somehow to discuss the convergence of the integral um, with respect to these two exponents alpha and beta, okay? Um, Uh, 
Okay, so probably when alpha is equal to one, beta plays plays a plays a role. Otherwise, it's more it's more easier. Okay. Okay, so for today we can stop here. I think.